Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a little makeup basket refresh. This is a series that I've been doing on my channel for the last few months and I'm planning to keep the series going indefinitely because it's been so much fun. It's essentially my take on a Shop My Stash rotating makeup basket where I pick a handful of products that I just want to make a point to use. A lot of them might be things that I haven't used in a while or products that I want to get to know better. Just in an effort to really rotate through my whole makeup collection, make sure I'm getting a lot of use and enjoyment out of everything, and also to make sure that I'm not hyper fixating on my project pan items, also giving other products in my collection some love in addition to my project pan. So it's been a ton of fun, um, and it's been a great way to get to know my collection even better. Products that I've had for a while, some of them I've changed my mind about, or just developed more of a solid opinion on. So first I'm going to give you a little recap on the makeup basket that I've been working out of for the past three to four weeks. I think these are the products that I introduced in like the first week of January. I'll show you some looks that I created, just share some overall thoughts on the products, and then we will pick a whole new set of items. So my general goal is to use each product at least five times. It's not a hard and fast rule. So I had 11 items in my basket for the last rotation, and I did manage to use all of them five times or more, except for one, and that one product I will keep in the basket for another rotation. So let's go ahead and talk about the products that I've been focusing on for the last like month-ish. So the first one was actually a new product to me that I kind of just wanted to test out and kind of form my thoughts on it. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I have the shade Too Fair and so far I'm kind of on the fence about this still. I don't know if I totally see the magic of it just yet. I know so many people love this product and from my understanding it's kind of like a multi-purpose product. You can use it as like a primer, you can use it as your base, you can use it as a highlighter, you can mix it in with your foundation. It's essentially like a multi-purpose liquid illuminator. If you have this and love it, what's your favorite way to use it? I'm curious because I, I, I've i used it as a primer a few times. It definitely is very glowy, uh, but you guys know I'm not big on primers, especially not glowy primers. Um, I've also mixed it with my foundation. I've used it as a highlighter and I like it. I've liked it every time I've used it, but I don't know if I feel like it's any different than other similar liquid illuminators that I've tried in the past. So let me know. You know what I feel like this would be really good for is to use as a base underneath powder foundation. I don't even own a powder foundation, but I know powder foundations seem to be kind of gaining popularity again. I'm kind of interested in picking up the e.l.f. what is it, the e.l.f. camo powder foundation that just came out, but I am on a foundation no buy, so I probably won't, or at least I'll hold off. Definitely going to watch some more reviews on it, but anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent. But I feel like this might be nice underneath the powder foundation because it, it might kind of like give you a little bit of a lit from within glow. I don't know. But let me know. What are your thoughts on this if you have it? I like it. I just don't know if I am totally sold on it. And I'm definitely glad I got the mini because... I don't think I would want to commit to a full size, at least not yet. The foundation I had in my makeup basket this rotation was the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk. Um, I also have the shade Fair in this. I really like this foundation. Uh, when I first tried it, I, I wasn't so sure about it. I felt like it was a little bit finicky at first, but lately I'm loving it. I love the way this wears on my skin. It's a nice, hydrating, light to medium coverage foundation, and it just never... I can just rely on this to never look cakey on my skin. It, it, it holds up really well. It might fade a little bit throughout the day, but it does so in a really graceful way. So I'm still loving this. I feel like this actually might be something I could use up this year because I feel like I don't have much left. I mean, it doesn't feel very full, so um, we'll see. Then I also had one of my favorite concealers in the basket this go around. This was the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I love this one. This is my current favorite drugstore concealer. I don't have any new thoughts to share on this, but this is just a great everyday concealer. I also like it for filming because I do feel like it gives me enough coverage on my under eyes. It's actually not what I'm wearing today. Today I'm wearing the Kosas concealer, but um, I honestly feel like this and the Kosas are, are kind of similar. They're definitely not the same. Like I do notice some differences between the two, but this is just such a good, reliable, old standby for me. Then another base product I had in here was the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Pressed Powder. I love this powder. This might be my favorite pressed powder that I currently have in my collection. Um, I haven't hit pan on it, although this um, this rotation I used this a total of 12 times. I feel like I am starting to see a little bit of a dip in there and I can kind of faintly see the little rings of the pan. So this is something I might hit pan on at some point this year. I like that I can very evenly dust like a nice 
thin layer on my face. It effectively sets my makeup, my under eyes, and the, my entire face. It takes away the tackiness, but it never looks dry. I can really kind of, not pile it on necessarily, but I do like to put a pretty generous amount of powder on my under eyes just because I don't want any tackiness under there. But the downside of that is sometimes that can look dry and crepey, but not with this powder. So this, I did not want to stop reaching for this whole time. Um, I also think the packaging is just super cute. So I really fell even more in love with this this past month than I already was. I think mainly just because I hadn't used it a whole lot prior to this month, just because I'd been panning some other powders last year. But I don't currently have a powder in my project pan, so it's been kind of nice to just like rotate through all my powders and this one, this one I think is my current favorite. All right, then we have a product that I developed some mixed feelings on. This I've had in my collection for a while. It's the All Good Get Glowing Lip and Cheek Tint in the shade Jam. This has SPF 15 in it, and I consider this a cream blush. I do store it with all my other cream blushes, but today I'm actually wearing this on my lips. Um, for the first time, this whole rotation I wore it on my lips today because I kind of forgot that I could do that. <laughs> for some reason I had it like, categorized in my head as a blush so I just kept forgetting that I could also use it as a lip color. So throughout this month and even before today I was almost thinking about decluttering this. It's not that I think it's a bad product but I was just kind of having some trouble with it as a blush. It is kind of sticky like it does have a bit of a tacky feel to it which isn't a bad thing per se but I did just have trouble applying this as a blush. I do feel like because it's kind of a small little pot I had a hard time getting a brush in there and when I picked it up on a brush the first time I used it it was really stiff I think just because I hadn't used it in a while so I had to kind of warm it up but then I was having a hard time get it on, getting it on evenly on my cheeks so I found that I like it best applied with a finger or I'll put like two fingers in there and just kind of warm it up and then I'll dab it all over my cheeks and that works but I don't know, I still didn't love the experience of using this as a blush, but then today I was like, mm, I'm gonna try it as a lip color, and I actually really like it on the lips. It's kind of a nice, like, blotted lip effect that it gave, and so now I'm torn. Now I'm like, well, maybe I should keep it. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about some more. I'm gonna keep playing around with it. I do have another shade of this as well. It is nice that it has SPF 15 in it, though. I think that's cool. It's kind of nice to just have a little extra SPF on your cheeks or at your lips. Then I also rolled in another like newer product that I just wanted to play with because it was new, is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in the shade Fair. So I, if you remember the first time I tried this in a testing new makeup video, I wasn't so sure about it because I almost felt like it was too light, but since then it's really grown on me. I'm actually loving it. It is definitely a subtle bronzer. Like it is about as light as a bronzer could be and still show up on my skin. But that's kind of what I love about it. I love that I just, I don't have to worry about messing this up or over applying it. I love that it's matte and it just always looks very perfected on my face. I love how giant the pan is so I can just kind of be sloppy with it and I just don't have to think about it too much. So I would say if you're thinking about getting it and your skin tone is any deeper than mine, the fair shade might be too light for you unless you just like a very subtle bronzer. But what I like about it is that it doesn't look like I'm wearing bronzer, but it still gives me a subtle bronzed effect. That's what I like about it. Then I also had the Aether Beauty Pink Diamond Dust Highlight in my makeup basket. This is actually the second time I put it in my makeup basket. I think I had it in my first round as well back in November, but I just love this highlighter. It's a very glimmery highlighter, which I know might not be everyone's cup of tea. I would actually describe it as like a little bit sparkly and glittery, which normally I wouldn't like that, but I don't mind a little bit of sparkle on my cheeks, especially because there's just something about this formula that it just gives this really pretty, almost like wet look to your cheeks. Isn't that so pretty? Like, I, I, I just really love this highlighter, so I was happy to have it in the basket again. Another new product that I put in the basket was the Aether Beauty Desert Sunset Palette. This I did film a five looks one palette and review on, which I can link for you if you wanna see that, but I didn't use it much outside of those five looks for the video. In fact, I think those were the only five times I wore it this month, but I did really love all five of the looks that I got from this. I was just also trying to focus on my Pan Those Eyeshadows because I'm <laughs> really trying to make some good progress for my first month of Pan Those Eyeshadows, but I do really like this palette. I think it's a really unique color story. I like the mix of kind of corals and olives. I feel like that's not a combo that you see all the time. Really, really unique, really fun. I think this is something I'm gonna especially enjoy in the summertime. Very happy to have this in my collection. The only product I didn't meet my five usage goal on was the Black Moon Cosmetics Liquid Shadow in Luna. I only used this twice, so I am gonna keep it in the basket for another month. This is a really pretty 
kind of duochrome sparkly topper. It's like, it's got like a white base and then a kind of a bluish purpley pink shift, which I feel like is perfect for the winter time. It's kind of frosty. I used this in my very Perry shop my stash look. Um, I did like a whole look kind of based around the Pantone color of the year for 2022. And this made a really pretty like glittery topper for that because it is kind of, yeah, like a bluish purple periwinkle-esque <laughs> sort of shade. So that was a lot of fun, but I do want to make a point to use this a few more times before I roll it out of the basket. And then the last two products in the basket were two lip colors. The first one was the Estate Lip Thirst in the shade Pink Pony. This is a really pretty, like kind of purple toned, mauve nude. I actually do have a little bit of this dabbed on my lips today on top of the All Good Jam lip tint. I really like the formula and color of this. That's what the color looks like just swatched out on its own. A nice kind of like cool tone purpley mauve. It goes with a lot of looks. Um, so it's just a nice like useful color to have around. Really enjoy that. I have a couple other shades of this in my collection as well. It's a nice, nice lip formula. And then finally I had the e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick in Cream in my makeup basket. I've been really enjoying wearing this as like a center of the lip shade to make kind of like a contoured ombre sort of lip. Um, I wore it a lot with my um, Project Pan lip products, the Jordana Lip Liner in Rock and Rose and the Milani Gloss in Soft Rose. This made a nice little like just center of the lip lightener shade. I'm sad though because this has started to take on a little bit of like a crayon sort of smell that it didn't used to have. I've only had this since September of 2020. So I haven't even had it for that long. I mean, I've had it over a year, but still. And I do have a couple other shades in this formula that don't have that smell yet. And I also haven't had those two as long. So has that happened to anyone else with this? And I don't know, I don't wanna get rid of it though, cause I wear it so much. And I've, I've really made like a lot of progress on this. I feel like this is something that I could potentially pan, but it doesn't smell bad. It just smells like the smell has definitely changed. So what do you think? Should I get rid of it? I really don't want to. What do you guys think I should do? Anyway, those are all the products that were in my makeup basket for the last like three, four weeks. The only one that's gonna be staying in is the Black Moon Liquid Shadow in Luna. Let's go ahead and pick out some new products for the next rotation. All right, so let's start here with my base products. I've definitely been combating a lot of dry skin. It's kind of an on and off thing. Like it'll kind of normalize and then it'll get super dry randomly. So. I want to pull out my Urban Decay Hydromaniac foundation. I really like this one. Um, I've just, I feel like lately I've been using my Ilia skin tint more often, so I want to give this some more attention again. For concealer, I think I'm going to pull in my Kosas Revealer Concealer. Um, I have the shade 1.5C. I did exchange this for the one I had previously, which was, I think, the shade 2W. That was way too yellow. This one is actually still kind of yellow, even though they call it C, which just stands for cool toned. It still at least is passable on me. So yeah, I'm thinking this will be a good hydrating concealer. I don't think I'm going to pull out a primer or a setting spray. I do have my Pixi Glow Mist in my project pan, and that's the main one that I've been using. So I don't really feel the need to pull either one of those in. All right, then here I've got cream cheek products. And then below that... I have powder cheek products and face powders. Let me pick a face powder first. Actually, I want to pull out my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light. I just really don't use this. Yeah, I just want to use it because, you know, I did buy it with my own money. It is a mini, so I didn't spend a ton on it, but still, I mean, I feel like it just kind of sits in my drawer and doesn't get used, so... I'm going to see if maybe I can get some more use out of this this month. And then for a setting powder, I'm going to pull out my e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder. This is the newest one to my collection. So far, really enjoying this. I just want to kind of... Do you see how dry my hand is? Wow. Um, I just kind of want to test this out some more and kind of solidify my thoughts on it. I already have my Cloven Hallow liquid blush in my project pan, and I also have my Physician's Formula liquid lipstick that I often use as a cream blush in my project pan. So I don't think I'm gonna pull out another cream blush this time, but I do wanna bring out a powder blush. Let's see, what do I wanna grab? So I'm thinking for this makeup basket, I wanna focus on kind of like Valentine's Day themed makeup. Lots of pink is what I'm envisioning, especially for your eye looks. So I'm gonna keep that in mind as I pick out other products. So keeping in mind that pink theme, one thing I wanna pull out is my ColourPop 
Super Shock Cheek in Monster. This has a really pretty like pink duochrome shift to it. And I just think this will look really pretty with some like pink and red Valentine's looks. And I'm kind of thinking for blush, this might be a good pick for blush. This is the Aether Beauty uh, Amber Cheek Palette. I really like the corally red blushes in here. And I'm thinking that these will complement some of the Valentine's themed looks that I have in mind. So I wanna pick an eyeshadow before I pick out the lip colors. I kind of already teased this in the eyeshadow palette tag that I filmed. Um, that was my last video on Thursday. But I really wanna pull out my BH Cosmetics Mimosa palette. This definitely screams like spring and summer to me, but I was also realizing that this has a lot of pinks and reds, and I think that a lot of these shades will be perfect for Valentine's Day. So this is the time of year that I kind of start to come out of my neutral like winter looks, and I start to um, kind of reintroduce more colorful looks. I mean, I've still been wearing colorful looks, but Valentine's Day is usually kind of the turning point for me where I wear a lot of pinks, and then after that, I'm like all in with the spring vibes. So. I think this is going to be really pretty for some Valentine's makeup. Another palette that I think of for Valentine's Day is my Perfusion Mauves palette. This is actually currently in my Pan Those Eyeshadows series. It's like a fully mauve and red color story. So anything that is in my Pan Those Eyeshadows is also, I also kind of think of that as being part of my makeup basket. So it just kind of lives here on top of my vanity. So that is another one that I really enjoy using for Valentine's Day. And then also my ABH Marvina palette, which is also currently in my Pan Those Eyeshadows. But to me, this is another great, like, kind of romantic color story. I love all the pinks in here. Perfect for Valentine's Day. So that's kind of what I have in mind for the Valentine's themed looks. So now what I'm really excited for is lips. So I'm excited to pull out some of these pink colors that I feel like I don't wear very often. Um, first is this e.l.f. lipstick in the shade Flirty and Fabulous. It's like a very cool toned pink color. Really pretty. I feel like this is one of those things that I kind of save for <laughs> Valentine's Day or like that time of year, which is so silly because that's like one day of the year. But um, yeah, this one definitely going to pull into my makeup basket. Another shade I've been thinking about is the CoverGirl 24 Hour Matte Lipstick in Thrill Seeker. There's that. It's a little bit of a deeper kind of more reddish pink. Another perfect one for Valentine's Day. Dang, am I overdoing it if I pick out three? I don't know, but this is another one that I kind of want. This is the shade Art Walk from Urban Decay. A little bit of a lighter, but still like kind of bright pink. That's pretty too. Mm, is that too much? I might kind of ditch the five usage goal for these if I do have three in, because I think that would be a little hard to pull off but I think I'm gonna put this one in too. I just feel like these three are all so perfect for Valentine's makeup. And then I also have my um, Physician's Formula Healthy Lip and Tulip Treatment in my Project Pan right now. And this is another like pinkish red color. So I think between those four, I will be all set. And then another thing, I recently started storing my lip liners in a jar next to my eyeliners. And I recently got a couple of new lip liners from Koki that they sent over. Really excited to try this brand because um, I've heard a lot of good things about these liners, but I'm also gonna pull in this one in the shade Bright Fuchsia. This will go really well with that e.l.f. lipstick and even the CoverGirl one, I think. Um, but so far, really liking these lip liners. Very, very long wearing. They really like lock into place. So, so I think this will be another good one to pull in right now. Okay, so if I counted correctly, this is 12 items total, which I think is gonna be plenty to play with for this next round. I'm so excited for Valentine's makeup. I feel like this is always kind of the turning point in the year where I start to get into more colorful makeup. I'm always really into like neutrals during the fall and winter, and now we're kind of climbing out of that. So I'm really excited, especially for this BH Mimosa palette. Um, and all of these other pink and red goodies. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this round of my makeup basket. I will leave the playlist link below if you want to watch more videos like this. But otherwise, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.